Okay, we are at, on the last substantive session of the day, and we just spoke about activism and non-activists, young. Uh, and the activist and now apparatchik of the government, <laughs> or at least a commissioner in the Commission for Gender Equality, Mbuise Lopota, uh, is going to uh, enliven us. He's a mover, so uh, I'm telling the camera person. He's, he's, a, he's a mover, he's, he's gonna be moving around. Uh, as a lot one can say about Mbuisel, as, as, a, as a lot. Actually, in this thing, it says he co-hosts weekly, this thing we pulled out on the internet. I think it comes from the CGE. He co-hosts weekly talk shows. No, that, that's not an error. He has several talk shows running on radio. He wakes up at four in the morning to talk to, let's say, DFM, and, and, and he has one with, the, with Cape Talk, and he's on and that power, we do both. You power and I. FM, yeah. and, and I think this, the energy. Just, I just get just tired just listening to, to the energy that that this man has. Uh, and two weeks ago, he 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 was featured on Ashraf Gada's show. It was Ashraf Gada. Yeah. Ash, Ashraf Gada. Yeah. A show profiling him, and he's been at this for a long time since the 80s. After uh, uh, he he before and after he was shot. So you can see his hand, and, and he never wants to talk enough about it. But I know now, now, Leslie, finally, Mbuisel is persuaded to talk about disability, masculinity and disability and gender, and, and gender after a long time. But uh, I, I don't know whether he's going to talk about it today. Uh, Mbuisel is, is a treasure uh, around gender-based violence and, and, and activism around men's violence against women, children, and other men, but also the resilience and, and work around fatherhood. Ladies and gentlemen, we sort of both. Thank you. Thank you, Kopang. Thank you so much. Um, I, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, little did I know when, when uh, Sissi, thank you so much for inviting me. Little did I know that this takes me back to a very sad period in my own life. And, and the elephant in the room, and I want to do this talk today dedicated to Ufezek. <clears throat> Uh, I get a call from Gwen Montage. It's a Sunday afternoon. He says to me, I've been to court uh, to at late the charge against Julius Malema. This is what Julius had said. Julius said, says, there was a President Jacob Zuma was going to, uh, you know, there's no presentation there, but, uh, so don't worry. President pre, uh, Julius was Julius Malema Silo was here in the province, and uh, they were, it was during the time when then the, the deputy president of the ANC, Jacob Zuma, was uh, just before Purukwani. So, and Julius, in one of the universities, spoke about how you know he feels about Jacob Zuma, and one of the things that Julius said was that about you know Fezeka, who we came to know as Kwezi. He said that, which was factually incorrect from the, what, from the, uh, the court case, and uh, I, 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 I did not give you a presentation, but I, I didn't, uh, yeah. So, uh, so don't stress, there's no presentation. Here. And then Judge Fandamerva had not said this about uh, Fazega. But Julius says in one of the universities that, Upiwe, Agashwe Ngulanga, Jacob Zuma, Lucid translated that there's no rape that happened. Upiwe means, and then today I've learned some sitting there, I was learning, I mean, new things. We say these where I come from. Upiwe, uh, ufuwe, you know, it's a thing, in tofela. You talk about thingness. But loosely translated, we say it has a suit, in tofela. And he says, Fezaka asked for, transfer, no, no, for, for taxi fare, which was not true. First, like I asked for food, which was not true. And I went to the Johnson Magistrate Court, the Equality Court, to lay a charge against Jacob, uh, against Silo, uh, Julius Malema, um, stating the box for about 
what, we went in from nine to about upper four. Uh, one of the things that Julius Lawyer, who is now an accused, uh, to me, Nkwen had said to me that, look, why was, why you, Mbuzelo, why did you go to court? Uh, you know, and, and I said, look, to me, I went to court because I think uh, what Julius was saying, uh, I think, violates the majority of women in our country. But he didn't understand this as a lawyer. And then Julius did not take uh, the stand, so he was, he was not asked, he was not interrogated. I, I was the only person who stood in the, in the dock and had to answer why I went to court. And I said simply that, look, I think that what Julius was saying, it silences the majority of women who get raped every day. So I think it was, it was incumbent upon me as a, a South African, who's also someone who believes strongly against nonviolence on women in our country and children in our country. And, and the, the trial went on. To cut the story long and short was that He was found guilty, and I insisted that oh, the organization then I went for, I, I, that uh, we would want him to pay 50,000 to POWA, people opposed to an abuse, so that there's a clear distinction that uh, there must be consequences for what he said. But when, when the unit, Copano and uh, Nosizo, what you, you, you organized was, what I, what I, I, and I, I reflected now, I mean, the whole of this week, what, what I never thought of was that, what Julia said about me, that look, here are senior ANC members who take us to the Equality Court, but because they are colonized. Because for him, he could not make the connection that I, I'm, a, I'm a black older man who was in the liberation struggle, and suddenly I find it offensive to talk about for someone, a young man, to talk about women in, in those, you know, uh, in, in that way that they, she is a, uh, she, 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 did, she asked for it. She asked for it because when you say someone who pee, you are saying that, in fact, uh, I, can't, I can't say it better in English, but it says that, in fact, uh, she, she, she made Fezeka made President Jacob Zuma to, according to Vesdaka, to rape her, because we know that she, he was cleared of, he did not rape. But, uh, so, so, so Julius said to me and about me that, look, uh, but the problem with, with you, when about Mbuzelo, is that uh, this is an Eurocentric agenda that you're pursuing. And, and, and I must confess this afternoon, that there was somehow there was a measure of truth in that. When I went that song, you would have funders who would have a particular agenda. They would go, you would go into these areas. And these are the outcomes we would want. We want you to, I remember Chris, you and I went to a, a vendor. I worked with you in vendor for the whole week, stayed in vendor. But, and, and the funding with the state, I would say that we want you to, in fact, go to this area. Deep stuff, there's this high, you know, a, Instance of um, femicide. We want you to go in, go to Alexander, go to Subuge. No way would they say. I've never seen in the years I've worked in the uh, anti violence on women and children, I've never seen a grant that says, we want you to go to Sunday. We want you to go to a hot sun test. Because we think that men in Sunday are violent or they're rapists. So, so, while sudden death I was about what Julius had said, on, but when you reflect on it, there's a measure of truth that I, I earn my money because then, because a donor would have made a, a particular preposition that this is an area I want you to go. But what was also said about what Julius had, had, had done is that there is the rape in the black community by black men is in fact acceptable, it is institutionalized. That I took offense to. And I began to, to understand something difficult to do, to separate what he said when there is nothing as said as being called an Uncle Tom. 
when you walk around with a disability, having been shot by police, you know, in the head, the bullet went through. There's nothing, I mean, it's the utmost a sense of being, I mean, you, you could be spit at, that, to be told that, look, in fact, what you are doing, it's actually, you are, you are, this, what I call the master's voice, that we say, look, well, you don't have black men who do the work you do. You're doing it because somehow there is a, a, a peculiar, particular agenda that you're pursuing. And that agenda, is, it comes from, from Europe. It comes, you, it means there's, there's nobody who grew up in Chagville who'd feel as offended as you are because then it is acceptable. It's something that you, you can't stand up, uh, you know, as a, as a black man uh, in the liberation struggle and feel so offended. One of the things Shivambu says to me in, in, the court, in, in, in court during, during break, Floyd comes to me and says, who's, the, who's now the deputy president of the EFF, says to me, Floyd, but, and she says it in, in Changani. Why when? Why when? Uh, because uh, there, there are women's organizations. There's, there's POWA, uh, there's Twaranang, uh, there's Rape Crisis Center, but uh, there's Ili Taliban. All of these women's organizations are not doing anything, but you stand up and you lay charge together with your organization, commission, uh, not commission for gender equality, then Songa Gender Justice, you go to court, you do all of these things. And this is an uncharacteristic of black men. That you, you, I, and Freud says to me, I, he says it beats him, he does not understand. It, and that's the same language that Gwena Mantasha says to me on a Sunday when he calls me. He says in Costa that, Buiselo Adilichi Pamnake, it was just after it was just after the NEC. It was on a Saturday, on a Sunday around a half past one. And he calls and said, "Look, uh, I, I I work at the uh, I work at the house. So at Tibana, we're meeting tomorrow at nine. I want you and I to." to meet so that we can, but this is the, the operative way, what, 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 what Greta says is that I want us to sort it out the African way. And I arrived there with Bafana Kumara and I asked him, I asked him a pointed question and said, but what did you mean SG, the African way? He said, no, did you get going to say, we'll just talk about this, and we we'll talk about this thing, you don't go to the papers. In fact, you and I should have met before. And now you're bringing Bafana Kumalo. I don't know why you're bringing him here. What is he going to do here? Because this is a matter that I wanted you and I to sort out. Little did I know that uh, uh, the following day, it was the 1st of June, and there was a launch of the June month, the youth month. So, so and I, when I look at television, there's Gwede at, at, a, at a church in Soweto to launch in this month. And probably just, he was going to tell him that to report back that, look, we just sorted it out. And, and we refused, and we said, look, the condition is that he must publicly and reservedly apologize and pay 50,000 to um, people opposed to human abuse. His rejection, his rejection was, was a, a, I mean, it, it left us bewildered. Why am I sharing all of this? Is that they, they, they so, so where the Julians, had, had actually find it, find it, I mean, find it okay to say that this can be sorted out uh, within this family. You are from the ANC, you from underground, you did all of this, so we don't find it, uh, you know, kosher that you go out publicly and say and do the things that you do, unless you are in fact part and parcel, to use today's language, that you're captured. But uh, unless, but then in the context of this conference, unless there's something, I mean, that this is, this Eurocentric, this, you, you, you they've colonized you, about the deal, about the deal. There's something, they've just finished you off. Be, be, because for, 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 for them, they, it was that, look, eh, women are fair game, women are available. Why is it a problem with it? Why do we even want to make it an issue? Well, it should not be an issue because, you know, and I, what someone was quoting what, what, what uh, um, uh, Pulma writes in, in a book, Rape. Look, it's, you, you rape, we rape because we can. 
because, but mainly because there are no consequences. This, this fundamental issue of impunity. So he, well, well, how I sympathize when I look back with what Julius had said, what Gwed had said, was that in fact they, 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 they don't find it, they don't find it anything wrong because uh, in the community you come from, when, when, when you do such a violation, it is, it is understandable, it is explainable, it is justifiable. You can rationalize it. So for them was that, here's this, this man who we really don't understand his politics. But fundamentally, the, according to them, my politics were the politics of being colonized. Because for them, uh, it did not make sense. When, when, when these things, they happen, and I mean, look, many, many years ago, I had a brother who raped, and I wrote about it, uh, it was in the Maiden Guardian. I had a brother who, wrote, who raped, and police colluded somehow with him. They came home, and because the, this, the lady from Alexander, she, all she said was, that, look, I, 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 I don't want to attend. She came from Alexander. She said, I don't want to come to court. I may lose, she was a domestic work. I'm going to lose my employment. So I want you, I mean, I would just want, and she said my brother must just replace her pair of glasses. And, and because Mojo, my brother, may his soul rest in peace, was unemployed, they came back home to negotiate with me as the only person at home who was, who was gainfully employed. And then Mojo said together with, with the police that, look, we want to negotiate this thing so that this gets away, okay, you know, we just end this thing. And I asked, uh, then how do I get, because he must go in. And, I, and then I did just so almost uh, 10 years ago. Uh, and I said, but how, how does this, how do I get involved? Because I think that uh, this, he must go and pay for his actions. And, then, and this is what they said. And they said, look, you're going to lose your brother. And he's going to go to spend about 15, 15 years for rape. Is that what you want? And I said, yes, that's what I want, because this is what he did. He has violated someone. But the police were said, but this is your blood. You can't do this. And then I did not have kids. I now have three, I have three kids now, two girls and one boy. But I asked the question then, that what if these were my daughters? One of them. I had asked, little did I know that I would have Spongenjalo and Lati. But, but the point I'm making is that the police were able to get, they saw nothing wrong, nothing untoward. They were able to even agree, to even countenance the idea, for starters, that there's nothing fundamentally wrong about thinking about it, let alone that executing it. But they, they saw it nothing wrong. Why? Because the environment is such that the police themselves, I dare say, the police themselves have, in, in, one way or the other, have violated women, either in their work, in their professional, you know, work, working life, or personal or privately. And, and they, were, they saw it as something easy to do, something that you would not find in other communities. And I rejected it. But look what happened. There's a, a shop owner who paid. Um, who paid uh, for the for the sunglasses, and my brother t did not go to jail. And he came back. I mean, I remember we were in the four-room house. I was sleeping in, in the dining room. I don't know what you call it. A studio coach, cops. Uh, studio coach. I can say it's a studio coach. I was sleeping there. So he, he came in, and in the middle of the night, and there's a song that he's saying that Ujila uh, Korovela. Then I was married. That's before I, I, I got divorced. And he said, Ujila Kurobe, that there's something wrong that, that my wife had poured when he was preparing food for me. But, but look, look, because according to him, it could, it's not possible that he, one of your own, your brother, you then reject him and not pay out money for him to go free. So I want us to realize and see how these things they connect. How police, how culpable they are, how they connive, how they condone. But also how the shopkeeper did not find anything untoward or wrong, anything that would actually make his hair to rise and say, but I can't do this. Because for them, women are a fair game. In fact, why is it an issue? So, so it, it has nothing to, when you look at, at, at Julius, 
when you look at the shopkeeper, when you look at the police, I mean, you find what the common denominator is that it is acceptable. It's okay, there's nothing wrong. Here, here law enforcers who are supposed to feel extremely angry, but in fact, they, they, they are part and parcel of ensuring that this woman is silenced. And how do silence it? Pay, I don't know, I, I don't know what Ray-Ban, I don't know Ray-Ban then how much it was, but just pay this Ray-Ban. And then uh, your brother got caught free. But look what happened. He went on to rape again. This time, he went in for 15 years. I wrote an open letter to Julius after the, the four, I think, we, I, I extremely I, I admired ladies who went when President Juma was giving the results, President Zuma, the results during the elections. I mean, the four, I think the, um, there were three, remember, crazy. But one thing that I did in that open letter to Julius, I reminded him of the things he said about me, about Sonke, about black men in general, who were, in fact, who he said, these were sellouts, these were Uncle Tom's that the women who are in the EFF, they must never forget what Crazy went through. They must never forget what, what Fezeka went through. And today, none of us speaks about it. And I said to the whole day, the elephant in the room, when you talk about rape, sexual violence, has always been what, what, what Fezeka went through. And I reminded them in that open letter, and reminded him and said, Julius, I hope you'll find it in your heart to realize that it had nothing to do with me being colonized. It had nothing to do with me feeling so angry for violating the dignity of that young woman who, when, and, and, when, who, who you said was, I mean, uh, he, he, she, she had agreed, you know, she, 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 she asked for it to, to be raped. That I hope that those, those three young ladies were brave they would come and face you and look at you in the eye and say, Commander in Chief, you were wrong. It's, it was about time for you to, 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 to ask for forgiveness. But also for women who would vote for the EFF. And that has nothing to do with ANC, DA, or, you know, uh, Ingata. But for, for women who, had, who were going to, rate, to, to vote for the EFF, to always be reminded of the things that had been said about women as they put their crosses to, not to forget. Guess what happened? Two days, two weeks after I penned that letter, Fezzi dies. Spongangalo, my 23-year-old, who's at vet, said to me, but Papa, why do you think he did not respond to your letter? I said, no, no, no. He was advised probably that it was, it was going to be, um, you know, it was going to be unwinnable. I mean, how would, what would he argue? But Bonga felt that, look, it, it continued to, to confirm that how he continues to undermine women. So we differed with Bonga and Jala. I said, well, no, no, my, my thinking is that uh, he has been advised, which I thought was a good thing you know, to respond to the letter, because in responding, I, 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 I shall have to think, what was he going to say to that letter? Because all I asked him of to do was to, be, to man up and say that I was wrong, and not to me personally, but to say, he was wrong to the South African women for the things he said about Kwezi, about Fezeka, and in general about thousands of women who gets violated, whose names don't make it to the newspapers, don't make it to television, whose stories remain unwritten, unspoken. And that lady from Alexander, who was expected to pay for her, her, her rape, is one of those ladies. And the consequences of going to court with him, with Julius then, I was told that, look, when I'm with them, because Julius was at, at the pinnacle of his career. No wonder uh, Gwena Mantasha did what he did. And I was told that, look, what you are doing is a career-limiting move, and there will be consequences. But physically as well, I was threatened. Uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, comrades, uh, people would not return calls. But the point I'm making about all of this, it's not personal, it's nothing to do about Mbuzel. The point I'm making is how, as a society, we, we accept the unacceptable. How we normalize the abnormal. How even comrades who failed 
uh, who, who faced, I mean, apartheid in the eye, had felt it comfortable to actually keep quiet and fold the arms and look the other way to what was happening to, to Fezek. So, as, as you do this, the one activism we do, as, as researchers, as academics, as you do this, remember that a South African society is a society that hates women. It's a society that every day brutalizes women and sees nothing. Women themselves would say to me, but Mbuzel, there were other causes you could have picked up. Why do you risk? There were places I stopped going to. Because then, I mean, I remember Latiwe. Latiwe then was a student at the University of now Northwest. The president of the SRC came to Latiwe and said, we know what your dad is doing. Now he has pressed the wrong button. But we'll deal with you. Then they said this to my ex-wife, that we will not want to visit you because we're afraid that your house, there's a rumor in the world that this house is going to be bombed. And all your kids and yourselves are going to be killed there. Because why would it, this is a very insignificant woman, why would you, do, why would you allow uh, your, your, your partner to, to go to this extent of going to court, to a quality court, and risk everything. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, we must never forget the unwritten, the faceless physicals of this world. As you do your work, always have them in mind who Julia said to Lisa Vettel, because Lisa Vettel became was a, a, an expert witness. That you hardly have done it for. What do you know? And in, 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 in that, to Mimukwena, the lawyer, supported you. Outside court, captured by cameras, SABC, that Lisa Vettel, who are you? You, 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 are, you are just but, and said things that are unprintable, that you can't say. But the, for me, the sad part was that none of those young African ANC youth leaders saw anything wrong about, about the, re the reaction of their members or the, the commander in chief. They saw nothing wrong. None of the members in the ANC stood up and said to Gwede Mantache, there is no way we can negotiate it in the African way. There's one of the African National Congress leaders in parliament many years ago who had, had, had made sexual advances to a young, I think, a young girl who uh, it was alleged that he even probably at, at their res residences raped her. But this is what happened. He, he had offered to pay a cow to his family. And no one in the leadership had found that repugnant. With all of these stories, the point I'm making is how, how is a society not only tolerant, but how permissive we are. How you, the, how the, 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 the survivor becomes the person who has to explain why she got violated. How a society, we, we ask inappropriate questions. That, but what was she doing at that time of the night? But what was he doing at his house? Why was, he, why was she walking uh, half, half dressed? Or why was she walking naked? All of these things. We never ask the questions which I think are fundamental. Why was she violated? And I always make the example or the analogy. If someone, gets, someone gets hijacked in his car, in her car, talking on, on her cell phone. We never ask the question, why was she hijacked? We ask the question, but why was she talking at night in her car alone? Did, did she not see, uh, I mean, the possibility that this? We, we never ask the question, but why was she violated? Why her cell phone, her own car were taken? Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen.